So if you do a simple Google search for any kind of popular software and type crack, you're going to see these results from GitHub that will promise you a free version of some kind of paid software. They will have a screenshot. They will have a download button that looks super official. And even if you inspect this download link, it's actually a GitHub repository. So you might think for whatever reason that it's safe, but as we'll find out in a few moments, it's not. If we click on this link, we're going to download a zip file. And inside of this, is going to be some kind of inconsequential random folder and then there's going to be an exe now the exe obviously is of interest it's the installer and this is what they expect you to extract and run hoping to get your paid software for free but if you do go ahead and run it you're kind of doomed because if we go ahead and upload this file to varstol you're going to find that it is some kind of trojan downloader and these typically link to an info stealer on the other end that can be used to steal your passwords and hack into your accounts. Now to GitHub's credit, some of these links are now actually dead. So as you can see, this one itself is 404. So they are taking down some of these malware links off of Google, but this is always going to be a game of cat and mouse. And these campaigns that act really fast set up a ton of repositories using something like a Rise Pro Stealer. So you'll suddenly see these um, different kind of GitHub repositories promising free software, maybe based on Google search trends or whatever people are looking for. And often there's going to be a username and password. So it's important to kind of recognize this pattern. So if you ever see any kind of download in GitHub that looks like this, don't click on it. It's an info stealer that's going to steal your cookies, your tokens, your login credentials and then try to log into your accounts. It's going to hack your YouTube, whatever it can. Most likely sell it on the dark web. Now, this particular campaign was reported by GData in March. And here's a long list of repositories. So some of these, funnily enough, are pretending to be cracked versions of antivirus software like Avast. Also, in general, don't download cracked software and definitely don't download that kind of stuff from GitHub. If you're Googling for some kind of crack or pirated software, you're most likely going to be getting this kind of malware on your system. It's going to be an info stealer. Not to say there aren't actual bypasses and cracks and all of those things out there. But if you don't know what you're doing and you're just Googling for it, you're most likely going to end up with some kind of malware. So do be very careful with that. Now, in this case, the download link was same for all the repositories. So it was fairly easy to take down. But as we saw, there's still going to be other repositories with different files and different downloads. And sometimes what's going to happen is like in this case, the download itself like this file is not the info stealer this is a trojan downloader that's going to download the info stealer or to reference some kind of python script or powershell script on another server and then that's going to do the actual information stealing so because this is not the main malware payload it may not be detected it might catch windows defender sleeping and then it's gg for you also these days it's very common to use msi files so files that look like an installer since classically malware has always resorted to being an independent exe a lot of people don't understand that an msi file could also easily be malware that's why some of the attackers like using it and a lot of these cases the info stealer payload is going to be injected it could just be a separate dll as we all know windows allows for dynamic linking so you could have a file like this uh, win installers x64 and this could have no info stealer component, but then it references a DLL that's an info stealer component. So when you run it, the info stealer is going to load into your memory. So there are a lot of tricks that attackers can employ to bypass defenses on your system. So do be very careful um, when you're going through and running any kind of software on your computer, especially if it's something that sounds too good to be true, like, oh, there's a paid software, but it's available for free on GitHub. You can just go ahead and click this official looking GitHub link and download it like yeah that's probably not what's crazy though is if we just go to github and just do a simple search for io bit crack or something like that we're just going to get a ton of repositories all over the place that are going to claim something similar half of which may be some kind of malware and you never know like some of these could actually be the crack but which one is which it's like a game of chicken so i do go to a lot of cybersecurity conferences i try to keep up with the industry see what's going on in the broader threat landscape and two years ago everything was about ransomware, but 
this year, I've just been hearing about info stealers and botnets, info stealers and botnets. So there does seem to be this general shift, especially in the consumer space of trying to get people infected with these info stealers, because whether or not they successfully hack into your account, they can collect all of these email addresses, credentials, and just sell it on the black market. It's a win-win. So if you harvest data for millions of users, you can make a lot of money as an attacker or cyber criminal. So be very wary of info stealers. The thing is, most info stealers are just going to be invisible. They won't change your desktop background. They're not going to do anything flashy. It's just going to be as simple as you run an exe like this, nothing happens, and you think, oh, I guess that's just a bad crack or something is missing or my software didn't install. But in the background, it has used a Windows component or a script to dump all of your login credentials and send it to an attacker server. It's as simple as that. Once the info stealer has done its job, the credentials are going to show up on the dark web or different chat rooms. For example, um, we just did a search for walmart.com. So these are accounts related to Walmart that have been compromised and shared. And as you can see, Rise Pro is one of the malware families that's been hacking people's Walmart accounts. But we could do a similar search for just about anything. So if we just do a search for Rise Pro, we can kind of see what they've been up to. There are just tons of leaked credentials on various chat rooms or forums. Here you've got uh, some kind of Adobe <laughs> software as malware, I guess. Looks like classic old malware exe name. And as you can see, these dates are very recent. So this one is from the 12th of May, 2024. And you can tell from the number of events listed here that this is a very common method by which people are getting their accounts hacked and the information is being leaked on the dark web. Now, this particular threat intelligence tool that I'm using to search on the dark web is Flare, which is the sponsor of today's video. So if you're ever curious and wanted to kind of navigate the dark web and look to see what information might be there on you, for example, you can do a simple search on Flare. You can literally see everything on the dark web, on GitHub even, that's referencing our stuff. A lot of these are just data scraping. You can see their stealer logs on Telegram. Thankfully, the content is only the name of the website. Some of these uh, do include my email, which unfortunately is not very hard to find these days. We've also got people referencing the YouTube channel on GitHub. But if you wanted to explore what kind of data is there on you, a live exposure profile where you can monitor and see if any kind of data on you pops up on the dark web, definitely check out Flare using the link in description. You can try them out for free. It's a pretty extensive tool. The search engine is pretty cool. It's got a lot of filters, dates, categories. So you can say if you want to look on the open web, leak credentials, you can look for specific things like ransom leaks or profiles or chats. It is a pretty extensive research tool. So once again, feel free to check them out. Use the link in the description and show them some love for supporting this channel. Like and share this video if you found it helpful. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, stay informed, stay secure.